The Big Bang Theory is smart, but is it medically accurate? We're about to find out. Let's get started. Be whoop. Hello. I slipped in the shower and I think I dislocated my shoulder. Ow. Not surprising, you have no safety mat or adhesive stickers to allow for purchase on a surface with a low coefficient of static friction. Basically, she had no grip in the shower. I actually am a firm believer that you need to make your shower safe, whether that means putting grips on the side so you can hold on if in case you do slip, or, or maybe even better than or, and putting some textured uh, floor, either tape or a rug or mat or something that's secured down to the floor to prevent you from slipping. <laughs> Oh my God, I gotta go to the emergency room. Well, assuming you're correct that your right humerus is no longer seated in the glenoid socket, I would certainly think so. That's actually very accurate. That's what happens during shoulder dislocation. Your humerus, which is so funny that it's called that, actually gets dislocated out of the glenoid fossa, which is the shoulder joint in here, and it creates a lot of pain. That being said, to put it back in is very painful. Once it's in, unless you tore something, it feels fine. There's actually been videos of like UFC fighters dislocating their shoulder, getting it popped back in, and then continuing on with the match. And if you have an instance of dislocating your shoulder once, you have a higher rate of recurrence of it happening again because the ligaments and all the attachments to it start becoming lax, basically very stretchy. And as a result, they're not as secure and it can pop in and out. Moving to psychiatric disorders, list all major behavioral diagnoses, e.g. depression, anxiety, etc. Oh my God, what the hell does this have to do with my stupid shoulder? It's important to know for doctors a complete picture in order to be uh, properly practicing, you need to use holistic care. In order to be holistic, you need to know the entire picture. Do you have any other medications on board? Do you have any other medical problems on board? Some medical problems can cause certain others to behave differently. Some medications cannot be used with other medications. If you're pregnant, we may be less likely to want to scan you. If you're pregnant, we might not be able to give you the same uh, antibiotics, etc., etc. You were given powerful pain medication and a muscle relaxer. In a lot of these situations, we give a patient maybe mild to moderate sedation in the emergency room when we try to reduce uh, the dislocated joint. Reduction of a joint literally means popping it back in place. I don't know why in medicine we always have to complicate everything. Just say pop it back in. Why reduction? Wait, you have to help me get into bed. <laughs> Sheldon has to get me into bed. Now, unless there was something broken, Putting a patient in an arm cast like that for more than a day is not ideal because then you start really risking the development of adhesive capsulitis from lack of mobility. So you want to get that mobility going as quickly as possible, ideally working with the physical therapist to make sure that you're not going too far and harming the injury. How's your family? Oh, it was the worst trip. Everyone got sick over the weekend. Sick, here we go. I don't know why people have a habit of this. When someone in their family gets sick, they spend all their time with them and then they come and hang out with others. Like, you know you're gonna be the one spreading the illness. Sheldon, relax. She doesn't have any symptoms. I'm sure she's not contagious. That's not how it works. You're contagious usually, or at least up to 24 hours before you show symptoms. Here, swab my throat. <laughs> I don't think so. Leonard? If I'm going to get ahead of this thing, I need to find out what's growing in my throat. You don't generally swab someone who's asymptomatic, meaning someone that's not showing symptoms, because that's not gonna give you a lot of useful information. You may be just colonized with a specific bacteria, but if it's not infecting you, meaning it's not creating symptoms, treating it may actually cause more harm than good. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Wait, put this in the bathroom. What for? I need to measure my fluid intake and output to make sure my kidneys aren't shutting down. Why would your kidneys be shutting down? Like, you feel great. Why, why, why? Why, why? We actually do monitor patients 24 hours ins and outs in the hospital. Usually it's reserved for patients who have some sort of kidney issue or they're having a diagnosis of heart failure and they're fluid overloaded. I want soup. <laughs> Why didn't you just Send the person home! Don't you imagine that if there were a way for me to have had soup at home, I would have thought of it? You can have soup delivered. <laughs> I did not think of that. <laughs> Clearly febrile delirium is setting in. Please bring me some soup while I still understand what a spoon is for. Febrile delirium is something that happens when someone's temperature is so high that their brain is no longer able to function cognitively. 
but your temperature would need to be quite high for quite a long period of time, unless you're incredibly frail or of old age, which he is not. My mother used to make me this split pea with little frankfurter slices and these homemade croutons. We have chicken tortilla and potato leek. <laughs> Could I get any of those with little frankfurter slices and homemade croutons? No. Then surprise me. You know chicken noodle soup has actually worked as a, a viral upper respiratory infection remedy. It warms the throat, creates more circulation, gives you added electrolytes to help you better manage your fluid intake and output. Maybe grandma was right. Okay, nice and cozy. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, wait. Will you please rub this on my chest? People love Vicks. They swear by Vicks. And the way Vicks works is you rub it onto your chest and it creates a cooling sensation because the menthol evaporates quite quickly, thereby cooling the superficial portion of the skin. It takes away some of the discomfort that you may be experiencing in, in your chest. And at the same time, if you have a fever, it can help cool your body down from that fever. That being said, I'm not always in favor of getting all fevers down because a fever is actually advantageous to your body in order to fight off said infection. There are instances where a fever can be problematic, if it's incredibly high, you have other medical conditions, you're frail, etc. But for a young, healthy adult like Sheldon here, he'd probably be fine. Is this Sheldon? <laughs> now you're the doctor, but I'm constantly hearing this annoying sound. That could be tinnitus, where you hear, most people describe it as ringing in their ears, but other people call it a drum, a weird sound, and it could happen for a whole host of reasons. What I've been seeing an uptick of in my office is younger people coming in uh, who have sensorineural hearing loss from damage to their ear hearing from listening to music too loud. And when you damage your hearing, that you actually end up developing tinnitus. But there's obviously a whole host of other potential options there. Yep, there's no information at all, Sheldon. Then it must be a tumor. Inflammation uh, in the tympanic membrane or in the inner ear canal really just rules out infectious causes by bacteria. There still could be other things going on. There's viral causes, there's non-infectious causes, so you gotta really be careful. Sheldon, what are you doing here? Hang on. 130 over 80. <laughs> a little high. Yeah, because you're taking it yourself and you're not resting and your feet aren't flat on the floor. All I need is for you to authorize these tests. <laughs> a cardiac stress test, a full body MRI, an electromyogram, a CBC, baseline glucose, upper GI. What is symptom is he having that he's requesting all these tests? Like those tests are not even routinely done together, let alone uh, in one patient. You are right. Your larynx is terribly inflamed. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I knew it. First of all, there's no shot she sees his larynx. That is ridiculous. She means his pharynx. The larynx is the voice box and it's much further back. In order to visualize that, you're gonna need a fiber optic scope to go inside the nose and actually go past the pharynx. You're gonna need to stop talking immediately. <laughs> For how long <laughs> she... <laughs> There are conditions where someone's vocal cords are inflamed and we do encourage voice rest, especially post-procedural stuff. And by the way, in instances where your voice box is very inflamed, whispering people think will be easier on their voice box. That's actually more difficult for the voice box and provides more stress and inflammation and damage to the area. Bernadette and I are getting married. <laughs> Ma? That's always worrying. My gosh, Ma. Oh. Does he have a dislocated shoulder now? So, how is she? They're running tests, I don't know. May have been a heart attack or heart attack-like event. So in some instances, when a patient's going to the bathroom and is bearing down, they can develop something known as a vasovagal syncope, where because they're bearing down, their blood vessels widen so that when they stand up, they actually don't have enough blood pressure to bring blood to the brain. And when the brain doesn't get enough blood, it makes the human body collapse in order to make it easier for blood to get to the brain. But that could be quite problematic because if you hit your head on the way down, now you're bleeding into your brain and you see where that goes. Regardless, coronary problems are imminently treatable. What's more likely going to kill Howard's mother are the antibiotic resistant super bugs festering in every nook and cranny of this hospital. Hospitals do have higher rates of MDRs, multi-drug resistant organisms, but that's not to say that all hospitals have them. We're actually aware of what bacteria our patient population's exposed to so that we have our own guidance as to what antibiotics we should use based on local resistance rates. Is there a history of heart disease in your family? 
My family is the history of heart disease. <laughs> I've also never heard of a heart attack-like event. I've heard of a stroke-like event. That usually means a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack. It's basically when a person experiences stroke-like symptoms, their speech gets mumbled, they lose ability to control a portion of their face, their tongue doesn't move appropriately, they pass out, but it's usually very short-lived. That's why it's transient. Howard, I have to go to the bathroom and no one will take me home. What's wrong with the bathroom here? Pneumococcus, streptococcus, staphylococcus, and other assorted caucuses. Those are different bacteria he's talking about. Will you at least go with me to the restroom here so you can open the door and flush the urinal? No! Actually, in the restroom, there's probably more enterococcus, which is E. coli, and E. coli is the most common bacteria found in poop. When you flush a toilet, that's the moment you should really leave because that's when a lot of the pathogens and bacteria and stuff fly out of the toilet. I think I'm too sick to go to the funeral. You're sick? You poor kid. We'll see ya. <laughs> Sheldon, aren't you gonna take care of me? Me? No. no I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's suffering from a URI, an upper respiratory infection. See some congestion, rhinorrhea. Overall, looks okay. I wouldn't say toxic appearing. 102.2. <coughs> That is a fever, and that is what the body's supposed to do when one is ill. Exactly what it was half an hour ago. I'm not a fan of checking temperature that often. It's not gonna give you vital information unless something happened to you clinically, like you're suddenly feeling much worse, then maybe you check it again, but just repeating it every 30 minutes, every hour, it's not gonna give you any valuable insight. Do you believe in the placebo effect? Of course I do. There have been many studies proving its validity. Yeah, great. True. Now, this may look like a Tic Tac. <laughs> But it is really a powerful medication specifically designed to cure your illness as well as freshen your breath. The way a placebo effect needs to work is not that just you need to believe in the placebo effect. You need to believe in the treatment that's supposed to be the placebo effect. And usually that comes in the shape of a doctor coming in with a fancy white coat or scrubs and telling you this will work. But only if you pay $29.99. It's just common sense. Apply today. Hey Amy, I brought you some drugs we've been working on in the lab. This is proving really good for congestion, but there's a slight chance it could make your tears burn like acid, so if you take it, happy thoughts. <laughs> she looks so much healthier already. The color's back, the nose is less red. I'm gonna draw you a soothing bath. I don't recommend people to take baths when they're ill, just because it's gonna ruin the thermal regulation of your body. You're just not gonna get a lot of benefit out of it. If you wanna clean yourself, take a quick shower, but don't linger for too long. This is a really good expectorant. Although some test subjects reported lactating uncontrollably when they heard music. A lot of these expectorants like guaifenesin or mucinex, most people know it as, don't have actually great evidence for working. They also have a pretty mild side effect profile and rare side effect profile. So people tend to use them quite often, but they expect them to work miracles. And in many instances, they don't do much. I don't need your medicine. I'm not sick. I don't understand. I got better two days ago. I knew it. It's just been so nice having Sheldon take care of me. This is called Munchausen syndrome. See this stuff in my nose? Rubber cement. <laughs> oh! oh! Okay. We've been exposed. <laughs> what does your underwear say about you? Click here to find out. And as always, stay happy and healthy. That's not really what the video's about, but watch it anyway. <laughs>